Hey there guys, today I wanted to make a quick video on my Smolov squat experience and uh, how it affected me as an Olympic weightlifter and also my squat. So just a brief overview of the program if you're not familiar. It consists of four phases. The first one is a uh, easy phase to kind of get you like adjusted to the high volume. The second is just like a kick in the ass kind of phase. Uh, it's three weeks of super intense squatting, four days a week. Um, for me and my squat range, I was going over 100% relative intensity or of what I should have been uh, by week two. So it's pretty, pretty intense. Uh, the switching phase, which is kind of just a deload, but uh, it's more based on like activating different muscle fibers and uh, different systems and stuff as opposed to normal squats. Um, and then the intense microcycle, which is a uh, four week four week phase plus a little peak, um, which is also pretty intense. Uh, for me, it wasn't as bad as the base cycle, but um, I'll explain why I think that was in a little bit. So the first one, the first thing I just want to go over is just my my raw progress. Um, so before I started, my the best squat that I had done was a 265. It was below parallel, but wasn't probably to the depth that I was kind of holding myself to as a standard. And then um, after the base cycle, I hit a 275 and then failed a 295, and it was very close. So I'd estimate my uh, base cycle max to be right after the base cycle to be 285 pounds. Uh, so already a 20 pound increase. And then after this, well, the sw switching phase, you don't really test. Um, I don't think my max changed much at all. And then the intense phase, uh, I squatted 285 super, super, super smoothly. And I was like, I, I just wanted to go for 315. Uh, I was pretty darn close to 315. I guess my max was somewhere around 295 to 305 at the end of intense phase. And then I just retested, retested my back squat max after three or four weeks, I think four weeks, um, and squatted 305. So pretty happy with the longevity of it. Um, so the biggest like thing that stuck out for me about small love was right after the base cycle, I was just hit with a bunch of really, really shitty, like just feeling really bad. Uh, I couldn't sleep, lost appetite, um, lacked like all motivation. I was at college at the time and I had to force myself through all my work, uh, super bad headaches, um, that just like crippled me for like three or four days straight. Uh, I got like bodily chills, like I'd be in a blanket and a hoodie in 67 degree weather and I'd still be super cold and uh, tiredness, just like this kind of went along with the insomnia. I just um, wouldn't sleep at night and then I'd take like five hour naps during the day and it was just really getting to be a bad cycle. Um, this last about the worst of it was probably about three to four days long, but the symptoms lasted about a week or a week and a half in total. Uh, and I think it was just overtraining. Um, and mainly based on my too high of a training max, which I'll go over later. Um, shoot. This is out of order. But, uh, so the intro cycle I'll go over first. Uh, this felt really easy. I used 275 as training max, which... I, I was kind of using this as like a test run to see if 275 would be a good base cycle max because um, it had been like two weeks since I did the 265 and I was doing some squat work. Um, definitely not the right move, but I thought, why not? Uh, it, it felt super – the first week was super, super, super easy. Um, the only only struggle was the last day of the second week, which was 5 by 85%, but I still got that without too much struggle. Um, mostly – what I have to say is just don't be tempted to push it. Um, I did 275 as mine, and it felt super easy, and then it kicked my ass in the base cycle. So uh, I'll go to that next. So I used a 275 training max, uh, which was a terrible mistake. The first week wasn't actually too bad. I, I thought, you know, 
this isn't crazy. Second week was pretty hard. Uh, I think I failed three of the lifts uh, on day four. So I got through uh, three by seven at like 100% relative intensity or something like that. Um, or no, just a little under that. But it was like 95% for threes, uh, 10 times. It was pretty brutal. Um, but I had adapted pretty well just in that first two weeks. And the third week was just terrible. Uh, I think I I either failed one lift on day three of the third week or I barely made it through and it was like super grueling. Um, and then I only completed 30% of day four of the third week. So, and then I just did some uh, pause back squat with like lighter weight um, after that. But yeah, I was only able to get to through you know, three by, I think it was 265 was the weight I was using for my um, three by tens, which was relative intensity was out the window for that. So next I'll go to my switching phase. So the switching phase started to feel, um, I, I was still going through the blues. It was right at the end of the, uh, of that base cycle, like, um, and then like near the first, the first week was pretty rough. And then the second week I got a lot better. Um, so I did cleans, snatches, and uh, squat negatives. The cleans and snatches, they felt pretty strong, but I had been in total six weeks without cleaning or snatching. Um, so my snatch, I struggled to kind of get all the way down in the hole. I struggled to like bring the bar overhead. Um, and then cleans were pretty good, but I, I could power clean like more than I could power clean before, but my full clean was still a little rusty. Um, but I think I was cleaning similar numbers, um, or at least I think I could have cleaned similar numbers. I wasn't using high loads uh, since it was a rust week. But, and then the squat negative didn't feel super great. I think that was probably just because I don't do squat negatives, um, but it wasn't the best thing. And I think I might have liked box squats more better. I don't know. Uh, something you guys might play around, uh, play around with. Uh, and then the intense phase, which was super weird because I started off um, and I was using weights that I had been doing pretty easily during like the second week of... Yeah, yeah. So I think the first thing, there was like a by three or by four and it was at the same weight that I was doing like my fives and sevens at um earlier and i was like really really struggling with stuff that just didn't feel that bad earlier uh but after i think the end of the second week i was feeling super super good there was the three by four um at the end at 95 percent and there was the five by fives at 90 percent those were pretty tough but they felt pretty solid throughout the whole thing whole thing and um yeah, the 3x4 at 95% honestly felt really, really easy. I accidentally did an extra 4, so I ended up doing a 4x4 four four for that last day. Um, definitely by far the most productive phase um, in terms of adding to well, my mental um, like ability to like think I'm going to squat it and uh, just like my mental toughness. I don't know. Not mental toughness, like my confidence that I could squat high weights, uh, that was like a big thing, doing the, like, squatting my old max for reps felt really nice. Um, and then lastly, my effect on my front squat and my Olympic lifts. So these were all tested three to four weeks after um, I maxed out my squat after the intense phase. So... My front squat went from a pretty good 235 to a pretty good 265. Uh, so I'd say I, I got added 30 pounds on there. Snatch is currently at 165. I hit a 175, and it didn't feel that hard the other day. Um, but I, I've i been trying to hit 185, and it's not really been budging. So I don't know. I think I just need to work more on technique and uh, pulling strength because that's something that's kind of weakened a little bit. Or not weakened, but it's proportionally to what I can squat, it's weakened. Um, and then clean and jerk, I've had some really, really good improvements. I went from having like super shaky 185 to a like really nice 205, feeling really strong. Uh, and I 
could probably hit 215 or 225 realistically within the next couple weeks or months. So I think that's all I have. Um, I'll include some videos along the way, uh, I guess near the end of the, uh, but I'll include some videos about um, with, with some progress throughout the way. Um, and you guys can hopefully take what you can from that. See how my form changed. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you think about doing small, let me know how it goes in the comment section. So I decided since I had some extra time, uh, I'd go over my squats. So the first one, you see very grindy 255. I think this was a good accurate measurement. Uh, and then this 305, three weeks after. Knees cave in a lot, but uh, gets up, so can't complain too much. <laughs> Front squat before and after, this is 235, and goes up pretty smoothly. Knees are pretty well out. Uh, this is 265, and I uh, got some pretty decent knee cave, which I need to work on. I know, but uh, Got the weight up. I was actually pretty happy with the snatch and clean and jerk progression. Let's see. Um, the snatch. This is my first snatch, uh, 155. Very unstable, uh, but pretty good depth. I was happy with it at the time. And then uh, this one, I, you can just tell I've gotten a good deal stronger. I feel like I'm in a lot more control of the weight. Uh, hips don't rise too fast. And then the stand-up's great. Um, same thing with the clean. You'll notice my hips rise really quick. Um, and the jerk is just super wobbly. Um, and then here is after small of. Clean is just way more solid. Uh, and then the jerk is okay. Not great, but uh, I'll work on it.